How do I create an audio plugin where I can load my own sounds? That's a question that we get all the time, and I'm excited to share that we're starting a new series on creating your own audio sampler plugin. This is something that we're going to build together over the next few weeks, and I'll walk you through every step from setting up an audio engine, to loading sounds, to implementing a custom user interface complete with LED meters and a waveform visualization. Here's the plugin that we're gonna to build together. And we can start by just dragging some of our samples onto the keys. So I'll take this sample, I can go and I can drag it onto any key. And when I drop it, you'll see a nice little animation for the waveform display and the light on the key itself. And also we have some parameters to help you get started as well. We have a decay for the sample and a reverb. And once I've dragged all the samples onto the keys, we can go ahead and play our sampler. This plugin series has been created with the help of our technical lead here at the audio programmer, Matthijs Hollemans. If you've been around the plugin world, I'm sure his name sounds familiar. He brings over 20 years of programming experience and is the author of two books that we published on building your own audio plugins. And as I mentioned before, what we'll be building together is a solid foundation. And this is something that you'll be able to build upon, customize and make all your own. And if you enjoy building your own audio products, be sure to stay connected with us on our website, theaudioprogrammer.com. You can also go there to join our audio programmer community on Discord. We've got developers from all over the world building and learning from each other. And if you take this tutorial and create something new with it, be sure to tag me on any of the social networks, Discord, X, LinkedIn, wherever. I'm looking forward to seeing where you take it. And of course, if you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. It's a big help for us and we appreciate all your support. All right, let's dive in. First thing you want to do is grab the project template code from our GitHub. I put a link to this along with any other videos that will be relevant in this tutorial in the description below. And today I'm going to be mainly walking you through our project structure. I know that project setup doesn't sound particularly exciting, but trust me, getting this right will save you so much headache later. We're going to be using a modern approach with CMake and CLion along with the Juice framework. And if you have any questions, about what this is or how to get set up. I actually have dedicated videos for those and I will put those in the video description below. That'll give you everything that you need to get set up. By the end of this episode, you'll have a working plugin. It's not gonna make sound yet. Uh, that gets covered in episode two, but it's going to be a solid foundation that you can build upon. Okay, here we are in CLion in our CMake list. I really like CLion for these types of projects that use CMake because with other IDEs, you need to use uh, commands to manually build your folder and invoke CMake manually and things like that. With CLion, you can just open up the project itself and it has all of that built under the hood. So I really love CLime for that. And you can actually grab CLime free for personal use uh, from the JetBrains website. So grab it and uh, grab the template code and follow along. So I'm just going to give you a bird's eye view of what's happening in this CMake file. I'm not going to go through absolutely everything because I have dedicated videos for that that I'll put in the video description below. But just to give you a high level overview, you have your general uh, project information. This project's called Sampler. We have some compiler optimization settings that Matthijs has put in here, and I'm not going to really go into those because it gets away from the fun of what we're trying to do, which is building a product. So I won't really go into that, but feel free to have a look at that on your own. The C++ version that we're using is C++ 20, but you could probably also use C++ 17. And then down here, a little bit further, we get into some of the interesting bits. One is that we're using CPM for this rather than submodules. For people who may not be familiar, CPM is what's called a package manager. A package manager is just a term that we use as a way that we're able to bring outside code and libraries into our project. What I like about CPM is that it's quite simple. So just to give you an overview of what this does. So it checks to see if CPM 
uh, which is the package manager once again, is already in here. And if it's not, then it'll just download it here into the repository. And then from there, the only thing that you need to do is just use this add package command to bring in any libraries that you want, which in this case, we're bringing in Juice to build this plugin. And that's it. That's all you have to do. No calling um, uh, init and update for some modules and things like that. So pretty simple stuff. Going down a little bit further, we have the juice specific stuff that we need to do in order to create a plugin. So you have these things like a company name that it needs, uh, which in this case is us, the audio programmer. And then the other main thing here that you need to take a look at is this is synth command because we're building a sampler, um, which is um, outputting MIDI and we need that to be true. So make sure that that's true. That's the key thing there. Uh, we're building for audio units, BST3, and the standalone version, and the product name, we're just calling it Sampler. And then below that is pretty standard stuff that I've covered in previous videos. Uh, we have the plugin editor and plugin processor source files. Uh, those are the standard things that you start with with Juice. And if you're not sure what those are, check the video description below for um, explanations on that. Then below that, we're, we have some uh, data that we're actually adding at the very start, which are our sounds. We have some xylophone sounds that we've created just so when you open the sampler, you have some sounds to play right away before you load your own. Uh, so those are stored as binary data within the, uh, within the plugin itself. So that just means that they're packaged in with the plugin. Then we just have some compiler options here, pretty, pretty standard stuff. And that's really it. Uh, the main thing that would be different or special about this CMake file at the very end here is just make sure that you add your binary data um, to your uh, link libraries here down at the bottom or else you won't have access to the sounds later on. Moving along to our plugin processor class, it's pretty standard stuff. Once again, same sort of thing that you get when you first load a Juice project up, except we've simplified it down a little bit just to make it a little bit easier. And then the only things that we've added are the audio processor value tree state object. So that's the place where you're going to be creating all of the parameters for this plugin. And we have dedicated videos for that in our foundational series as well, if you're not familiar with how to get that set up. Going over to our C++ file, scrolling down a little bit further, we have this function that we've created, this additional called create parameter layout, and that's going to be the place where we're going to put our parameters. And then going up a little bit here, we've also added the basic foundational code for setting and loading your state. So when you're in a uh, DAW and you have your plugin loaded and you save it within a project, you want that to load with the same state when you load the project, right? So that's what this code is for. It's just pretty um, basic code for that. And I also have a dedicated video for that as well. Moving along over to our plugin editor. This is where we'll be actually drawing the plugin that people will see. And this is a blank class. So there's nothing really in here. If you go over to the CPP, the only thing that we do is have a background that's dark gray. And if we compile this, once again, make sure that you're on the right target here. So I, by default, like to build on standalone. So you can build for all of these different things like VST or an AU. And I like to build standalone so you actually see what the plugin looks like. And we'll go ahead and compile it here. And what we should have is a plugin with a gray background that does absolutely nothing so far. And it's going to be very boring to look at and it doesn't do anything. But this is the necessary foundation that you need in order to get started. In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is get sounds into this and actually have something that we can play. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have questions on this project setup, please feel free to put them in a comment below. And I hope that you enjoyed this one and I'm excited to build this with you and I'll see you next time.